Hey, Dr. Drainage here to help you select the proper drainage channel for your project. The first step to solving any drainage problem is to determine how much water needs to be managed. I provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to calculate your runoff in my How to Calculate Runoff videos. You need to know how much water will be draining to your channel in order to select the proper drainage channel for your project. Let's begin. A channel drain, also called a strip or trench drain, is a long linear drain that collects surface runoff over a large area. Channel drains are commonly used to prevent surface water from flowing into garages, doors, and parking lots. When selecting a channel drain, the following things must be considered. How much water will be entering the channel? What is the slope of the surface where the channel will be installed? Will cars be passing over the channel? Flow capacity tables have been created for each channel drain. These tables show the amount of water each channel is able to convey. The flow rates through the grates and outlet flow capacities are also shown for each drain. To determine if a particular channel drain will work for your situation, follow the following steps. Step 1. Calculate the runoff draining to the location of the channel drain. Step 2. Figure out the slope of the surface where the channel drain will be installed. The slope on a channel drain greatly affects the amount of water the channel can convey. Steps to determining slope can be found on pages 10 through 12 of our Principles of Drainage. Step 3. Find the slope on the table closest to the slope of the ground where the channel drain will be installed. Follow that row to the flow discharge column. Compare the flow rate in the flow discharge column to the runoff calculated in step 1. If the flow rate in the flow discharge column is less than the calculated runoff, choose a larger channel drain. If the flow rate in the flow discharge column is larger than the calculated runoff, then move down to the next table. Step 4. The flow rates through the grates table shows the load capacity for each grate and the flow rates for each linear foot of the grate. Make sure the load capacity of the grate meets or exceeds the expected loads on the channel. Load capacities are divided into the following classes. Class A, up to 60 pounds per square inch. Class B, up to 175 pounds per square inch. Class C, up to 325 pounds per square inch. Class D, up to 575 pounds per square inch. After selecting a grate that can support the expected load, Multiply the value found in the flow rate GPM per linear foot column by the entire length of your channel project. This is the total flow capacity of the grates. If the total flow capacity of the grates is less than the calculated runoff in step 1, choose a larger channel. If the flow capacity of the grates is greater than the calculated runoff, move down to the next table. Step 5. Determine which outlet will be used to drain the channel. If the flow rate in the flow rate column is less than the calculated runoff, choose a larger channel drain or different outlet. If the flow rate in the flow discharge column is larger than the calculated runoff, then the channel drain chosen will work for your drainage project. To download the companion guide to this video, which includes all charts and resources, click here. If you're interested in learning more about residential stormwater drainage or other NDS drainage products, visit our NDS Homeowner Drainage website here. Be sure to check out our other videos that are part of our NDS Drainage course, How to Build a Drainage System. If you have any questions or suggestions for another video you would like to see, email me at drdrainage at ndspro.com. I'm Dr. Drainage. Talk to you later.